Hello geeks and gamers and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In the last episode we uh, learned how to blend into a crowd and then immediately failed at it and got into a big fight. Uh, confronted Gorm, Kyotve's son, um, who uh, then you know, we had to stop ourselves from murdering because uh, it would break a truce that we had set up. Um, then went and uh, briefly went to a celebratory sort of thing for us destroying Kyotve and all that. Gorm showed up uh, and King Harald promptly banished him um, after King Harald uh, made his true intentions clear that he is unifying the lands of Norway um, to uh, basically serve under him, the one true king sort of thing. Uh, our people, though, don't like that. Uh, the king, uh, Stierborn, uh, swore fealty to King Harald, much to the chagrin of his son, Sigurd. Um, and so our plan now is to take the, uh, take what we, what we got from slaying Kyotve, all of the treasure there, um, and uh, fuck right off to England and make a home for ourselves. So that's, that's what we're doing. <clears throat> I don't like the way those soldiers watch you. I find it flattering. You think one will marry you and carry you off to the capital? <laughs> would he? He would take his pleasure and move on. <laughs> All right. Well, bro, let's hey, roll out. Favors us. We should set sail without delay. I agree. Let's Great go. Great work of packing. Well done. The dream of new lands is a powerful lure, as is the promise of glory. But the act of leaving so beloved a home, there is a sadness to it. Having doubts? No, not at all. The die is cast. And let fate guide our journey. Let fate decide. Ready? I am ready. Let us take to the water and leave unbothered while we have the chance. That chance has passed. Look! Fate flies on swifter wings than we. King Harold's banner. No, look, he said we were able to leave if we wanted to. Like, don't be a dick now, King Harold. You won. See, you have the land. We're what fucking is this off. Assembly? What are you planning? I'm asking, think? Father. As graceful as I can. For if I cannot be king in the land of my birth, I will start a new saga in England. Nonsense. Your place is here, son, at my side. There will be other victories soon, other glories. My choice is made, father. Do not hope otherwise. There's nothing for me here. I must go make my name in the world. Plundered Fornberg's resources, I see. You leave nothing behind but your honor. You left me no choice. I entered the Alvin a prince. I left the son of a yard. There are always choices, Sigurd. I will not stand between you and yours, but I do not accept it. <sighs> Seventeen winters ago, I opened my door to you, Eivor. And now, your only thanks is to rob me. I should not have left you to the police. robbing you of what was mine. I killed him. Sir, the plunder oh, is mine. Do not carry his words with you to England. He brought this day upon himself. I know. The camera is tripping out. What the fuck? 
<clears throat> Ooh, I can go into a panoramic view. Oh, that's beautiful. Whichever comes first. Oh. Oh, that was... That was a... Uh, <coughs> that was an extended uh, opening. I see. <laughs> Jesus. To England! Uh, who the fuck? I guess this is the person that is inside the uh, Animus right now. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, holy shit, an extended-ass opening. What is this, episode 10 now? Uh, so, a p two and a half, about four and a half hours or so of an opening? Four hours? Jesus. Imagine this is probably gonna be like Odyssey, that we don't spend a lot of time out of the Animus. Is this the same person that was in Odyssey? I can't remember. I need to I need to play Odyssey again and actually finish it this time. Alright. Jesus Christ. Uh, you know you could use a cup, right? Caduceus staff? Oh. Uh, she, she closed the door behind her. At the University of Cambridge, Dr. Sierka told a worried audience that scientists have few answers for them. Since the mass coronal ejection of 2012, the strength of the Earth's magnetic field has increased by a factor of 50,000. Jesus. This has resulted in huge disturbances in radio and satellite communications, dangerous bands of radiation around the poles, and as we can all see from our window, an aurora borealis that never burns away. Unfortunately, we are stumped as to why this is happening, and if we cannot find an answer soon, it may change the way we live, the way we communicate, even the way we evolve forever. Dr. Went on to yeah, wasn't that part of the plot of she's using AirPods? Uh, was wasn't that part of the plot of? Um, Thanks, Sean. Wait, isn't Sean from the first games? But uh, wasn't that part of like the overall plot of like the first handful of games? Was that it was leading up to 2012 being the end of the world? Like I said, I, I only played like the first two or three games in the series. How do we fix this? How are you the key to everything? Oh, is that... is that Avor? Damn. You're a long way from home, Avor. Hmm. Guessing we're in England right now? Yeah, wasn't Sean in the first few games? of this area um, I am actually allowed to explore. I feel like, I feel like, you know, this is something that, uh, one of those moments of, like, I don't 
know the overall story to everything, and these are this is probably a character that I would recognize. Some quality stuff here. Oh, sorry. Oh, mint tea is not actually tea, Max. It's an infusion. It's really just dirty minty water. I don't care what you call it, John. Did you buy any? Of course I did, love. Hey, sorry about pulling you out. The generator was sputtering. That's fine. I needed air. How is the Animus data stream? Comfortable? Felt pretty stable after a while. Good. Just give me a sec and you can jump back in. Another satellite came down. Did you see? I did. One of Abstergo's. That's good. Well, most of North America just lost its GPS service, so... Depends what you mean by good, really. Right. Even when we win, we lose. Okay, we're all set. Whenever you're ready, you can jump back in. Okay. You mind if I put some music on? Go for it. Cool. a few hundred years of scholarship about the first Europeans to set foot in North America. Apart from that, it's just a bunch of muddy bones, isn't it? Can we talk about this thing on my neck for a second? Ah, the mood stabilizer. Yes. It's not harmful, is it? I mean, I feel good, but I want to make sure there's no side effects. There shouldn't be. It's only blocking outside signals, a passive effect, so the staff doesn't, you know, mess with you. Sean, what happened last year, I, I had no control over that. I tried to resist. I understand. And your old team? Maybe they don't. But we've seen that sort of thing before. Still, if you want to work with us and get to the bottom of why the world is about to end for the second time in eight years. Then you wear that thing until we say otherwise. William's orders. I know. It's not a problem. It's just a few more weeks, yeah? Just until we figure this out. You're right. I know you're right. Sean has been busy. An audio fragment sent from an unknown location to our encrypted servers. Nothing was stolen, nothing corrupted, just a quick deposit and gone. We got lucky this time. So what is it? A cryptic sound file, voice unknown, with a signal beneath it. The signal was a code. Led us to, the, to a precise spot here in New England. We dug, and good lord, we struck gold. Well, silver, dominant currency of the Dark Ages. Point is, it was a grave site. It was a grave site. A Norse warrior dating to the late, late 9th century, early 10th century AD. A few centuries before the earliest known settlements. This is big news if we have it right. Question remain. How did these bones get here, and why? You gonna put this in the fridge, Sean? Of course. In half a minute. Remember, tomatoes go on the counter, not the fridge. Please enjoy your stay. Remember, all the garbage must be packed out, and please water the plants once a day. Yeah, I won't remember that. Sean, don't forget to water the plants while I'm under, okay? I'll add it to the calendar, and I'll tattoo it on my leg. <laughs> That's quite nice. Silly. Let's have a look. From Rami Hassan to Layla Hassan, date May 11th, 2020s. Object RE No. Oh, oh man. Okay. I don't have. So, the original message, uh, sending it to. Uh, from Layla to Rami. I don't have COVID, no, and I'm well isolated. It's just the three of us traveling together, staying out of sight. L. And then he responded, Thanks for clearing that up in such profound detail. I'm sure I'll sleep soundly now. <laughs> wow. Uh, 
Okay, so original message uh, from Layla to Rami on May 1st, 2020 at freaking almost 2 in the morning. Subject disappearing for a while. Rami, forgive the short email. I wanted to say the short email. Forgive the short email. I wanted to call, but I'm not using phones right now and my time is limited. I'm still recovering from my trip. Things got out of hand and nothing went as expected. People got hurt. I told you it was for research. And it was, but for, but not for, uh, I'm going to go with Abstergo. The truth is, I haven't worked for them in a few years. It's a long story, but it won't, but I won't bother you with the details. Uh, but it wasn't for me. Leave it at that. Uh, the group I'm with now, I can't explain, not over email, but they've shown me things, given me opportunities, and opened my eyes to a broader view, but not without cost. In fact, I fucked up last year, bad, more than once, and I needed to make it right. I know all this sounds cryptic, it is, but I'm not in danger, not in the way you might think. If I'm being vague, it's because I need to be. I don't want any data sniffers picking up on key keywords that might raise alarms. Do I sound paranoid? A little? Here's the point. Don't worry about me. I'm with a couple of people at who I trust now. They've been at this a lot longer than I have, and they're going to see see me through this. I promise. At this time next year, things will be better. The skies will be clear, and earthquakes will stop, and we'll celebrate Ramadan together. It'll be just like the 90s all over again. Tell Mama and Baba I miss them, and I'm doing fine. Your sis, L. His response. On May the 2nd. Uh, I don't like the sound of the uh, of any of this, Layla, and I don't like where this is leading, not using phones. It's not right the right way to ease my mind. You have my number. I suggest you call it. And no, I won't say hello to our parents for you, because doing so would bury me in questions I cannot answer. And to tell Father that you no longer work for Abstergo would break his heart. That's all he ever talks about, how his daughter is on the cutting edge of neuroscience. The man doesn't understand the first thing about what you... about what you do or did and he's still proud i will not be the one to disappoint him is it covid is that why you're being all cagey something else call him call me and stop this insane game of hide and seek i don't i want to i just want to know you are safe rob okay so let's start here with this one okay uh, from unknown sender, unknown sender to layla on december 27th 2019 um, you have a gift and a curse. Wait. Okay, whatever. You have a gift and a curse. The gift of old, of old blood. The curse of not understanding it. We can help. We can help if you help us. What you did was not your fault, but you must take responsibility for it. Otherwise, nothing gets done. One of us will contact you. If you miss us, you miss your chance. Uh, from Layla. She just said, who the fuck is this? And then another message says, L, would your favorite baseball team happen to be the Atlantis Eagles? Uh... Okay, and then she just said, I'm ready. L, one last message, after which all communication between us uh, via this account or any other will cease. We have our own ways of talking. Methods that cannot be sniffed or traced. Your previous team made this mistake. They knew the risks, but they were sloppy. Left traces of their activity on everything. Digital fingerprints everywhere. That will not happen with us. My colleagues tell me the initial meeting went well. They are impressed. If a little wary of your of the influence your new toy has on you. But they know better than most what it means to live with such a burden. I am curious to know more about this air of memories epithet. Uh... It is, not, it is not a phrase we have heard in all of our decades of research. In a few weeks' time, we will contact you once more. If you are interested in proceeding, follow our instructions to the letter. If you are not interested or you break any of our protocols, it will be the last time you hear from us. Take this to heart. The world is sick and getting sicker. The Earth's magnetic field is growing stronger. Satellites are falling from the sky. Earthquakes are getting more frequent. Famines are becoming more and more frequent. And now we have credible reports of a new and deadly virus sweeping through Asia. I can feel like we're living through the Yichin nightmare. Mere anarchy is loose upon the world. And in many ways, we are. But there is hope. There is us. There is a cure. Us. Oh, you hear that, guys? The assassins are the cure to COVID. Uh, in the past few months, we have come across something that may solve our most pressing problems. A message. A very promising message. That may help us reverse the dire course we are on. If you want to be part of the solution, join us. If not, we wish you the best of luck. Right. 
Oh shit, I fucked it. Stop it. Okay. Layla, as you traipse about England, Bex and I thought you might want to keep your eyes open for a few things. Assassin bureaus. Or the hidden ones, more accurately. They operated in Roman Britain between the years 100 and 430 CE. It's not clear why they left, but the final date corresponds roughly to the Roman exodus from Britain. So I imagine their leaving had something to do with the Empire's retreat. Mission accomplished or loss of faith, not sure. But we do know that it is several hundred years before the hidden ones return to the island. It may be Bossom or Hytham uh, are the first, first and half a century. From our own archives, I believe they were there were six main bureaus operating in the Roman period. Uh, uh, Lake, Lake, Leicestershire, London, Winchester, York, Essex, and, and Gloucestershire. <laughs> Worcestershire. Uh, they won't be. These won't be the Saxon names. You'll have to. Uh, you'll have to read between the lines. Animus anomalies. Bex noticed these, about ten, embedded in the simulation. They are dense clusters of data that may screw with your ability to navigate Eivor's memories. Approach with caution. We don't know what they'll do if you get too close. They may be harmless, they may induce uh, a simple shock, or wipe your mind. Hard to say. Best to err on the side of hell no if you're curious. But if you're curious, well, I warned you, in the pieces of Eden. We don't know of any Isu artifacts you should be looking for specifically, but they're out there. And this was a period where they often cropped up in legend. Norse and Saxon songs and tales speak of them often, so keep your eyes peeled. Especially around Stonehenge. How could that not be an Isu site? So this episode is just going to be a lot of me reading, I, I, it seems. <laughs> Animus Session Report. Uh, thir 3 November 2014. Operator Rebecca Crane. Subject Sean Hastings. Reporter William Miles. Uh, preface. The transformation of the Order of the Ancients into the Templars as we know them today has always been a subject of considerable debate amongst our ranks. We have operated with the assumption that the Templars themselves hold some or complete knowledge of this evolution, but at present, no concrete historical evidence has ever been made, has ever made it to our hands. With little data, we do have is mostly a matter of public record, with some exceptions. It is commonly understood that the origin of the Knights Templar date back to 1119 CE, and this indeed was the appearance of the public face of the Templars. However, our records attest to the existence of Templar agents at least two centuries before this date. In one badly damaged document, an assassin contract from Normandy in the mid-11th century, the author makes free use of the term Templar. An earlier letter, this time, this time from the Hidden One in the region of modern-day Dorset, circa 978 CE, makes mention of a Templar spy within the ranks of the Brotherhood. From this, we can safely assume that the Templar Order, as an entity distinct from the Order of the Ancients, existed at some point in the mid-10th century. With the aim to expand our understanding of the Dark Age, one of our ancient re one of our agents recently volunteered to delve into the genetic memories to search for further clues further clues uh, to this age-old mystery. Unfortunately, what he discovered was of little use to our purposes. Sean Hastings began the first of his seven sessions on October fifth, twenty fourteen. Over the course of the next three weeks, he followed various. Uh, uh, matrilineal and patrilineal lines to the past, focusing on the 9th, 10th, and 11th centuries, and assassin and search of assassins and or Templars in his bloodline. He found one of minor interest. However, uh, however, it was the following personage he uh, here noted for the particular of his biography. Uh, Alaric, uh, <laughs> Alaricer Th Thorvaldson. Uh, as a, an early 9th century uh, Ute, Jute, who sailed north from modern-day Denmark with a wooden plank bearing a carving of a map that, uh, purported, that uh, purported, um, th to mark the location of Thor's hammer. Um, Alrecker, Alrecker made it as far as the uh, Stavanger before running afoul of a powerful clan there. Uh, Alrecker was defeated in battle and enthralled as a slave. He escaped his captivity some ten years later and returned to Jutland to marry and settle down. The location of Alrecker's map is unknown and the existence of Thor's hammer, a precursor relic no doubt, remains unconfirmed. Alrecker's ancestors would later sail to England following the Normans' conquest to the, of the island, settling in what, uh, in what is now called uh, Lauborough in modern-day uh, Leicestershire. The irony that a man named Hastings would contain 
no useful genetic memory data regarding the Norman invasion of England in 1066 was not lost upon our dear subject. Still, he retained his useful chipper wit and asked if he might next relive the genetic memories of his grandfather to, quote, give a Nazi a proper bollocking. Yeah, fuck them Nazis, man. All right. Jesus. No, no, come on, Sean. Turn that thing off. Oh, hold on. I like what you said there. I want to get this for posterity. Say it again, nice and loud. Uh, seriously? Sure, come on. If nothing else, it'll give me leverage with your old man. Ah, uh, that's your angle. Nice. What I said was, I wish I hadn't been born into the assassins. I wish I had chosen this life. Is that good enough? Sure, but why is that? Because, because choice is the central idea of our creed. It underpins everything, right? It's about free will. It's about seeing the evidence before you and saying, yes, this is what I want, or no, this isn't for me. But when you're born into a group like this, or any other, like I was, you get mixed signals. You get told over and over again, this is what we believe. These are the rules. This is reality. No deviation. And if you question it, oh, they look at you like you like you killed a puppy. That's hardly free will. It's a weird irony when free will is your central belief, but nobody wants you to believe otherwise. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I always thought there was something self-destructive about our creed. If free will is the most important moral guidepost we have, we should be free to ignore it, to choose submission for example. You know what I mean? Like, we should be free to side with the Templars. If it's really my choice, I could do that. Right. It's almost self-refuting. The democracy could democratically elect a dictator or choose to get rid of democracy altogether. Within our creed is the seed of its own destruction. That's what makes it powerful, I think. And fragile. Right, right. The more freedom you have, the more risky it is, you know? Anyway, my dad has mellowed over the years, but he was strict when we lived on the farm. He ran a tight ship. I never got the impression that I was free to choose my path forward. Our creed, our tenets, they were drilled into my head. By the time I was a teenager, I was following these rules out of a sense of duty. This was just what we did. That happens to a lot of organizations over time. The stagnation sets in, you know? The fundamentalism. Yeah. Following the rules becomes more important than achieving whatever goal you set out for yourself. And people start to lose sight of the reason the rules exist. That's called deontology, or a form of it. Following a rule for its own sake, and not for the consequences it has. Yeah, but that feels backwards, doesn't it? Well, I think so. Following a rule is the easy part. Praying, taking a sip of wine, munching on a wafer. Rituals that give comfort. But that's just going through the motions. It makes people feel like, like they're doing something. When the hard work is, well, actually getting off your ass and doing something productive. 
I think people just want boundaries, tight boundaries. They want to see the four walls that pen them in. I don't disagree. Anything outside that, anything that makes life more complex, that's scary. Yeah. That's why I. I completely agree with all this. You chose this life. You went through that process, and you decided, yes, I believe in this. Sure. It didn't stop me from being an insufferable know-it-all as a teenager, but. I see your point. I would have loved to have been a know-it-all. I knew nothing. Not until you guys found me. Yeah. It wasn't until I met you, Bex, and Lucy that I knew. I knew I wanted to be an assassin. Oh, thanks, Des. Come here. Bring it in, bud. I don't normally like touching, but I'm making a section now. I am not hugging you. You sure? Because I smell very nice today. Can't you just turn that off? I'm not sure if that played both of these. Hold on, I'll just no, this okay. Here. Did you guys record everything? It's gonna be a little bit of a longer episode because I I I, I want to get through all of this in this episode and not you know. Things about prolonged exposure. So I'm your guinea pig. No, no, my guinea pigs are all dead. The animus is too much for them to handle. Cute. Can I ask you about the bleeding effect? Any recent flashes? Any memories resurfacing? Yeah, the usual things. Ghost images of Altair and Ezio a few times a day. Nothing intrusive, just brief moments. They pass quickly, almost without me noticing. Like a figure in the corner of my eye. Or remembering a dream from the night before. I did have one extended hallucination a few days ago. It was Ezio. He was older, around the time he left Cappadocia. He was standing on the deck of a ship, alone. And through him, I could feel an intense regret or guilt. And it felt to me like he had a, a loss of faith in himself, in the creed, like he couldn't keep it up, couldn't stay true to his ideals. And as I watched him, I thought, is this the moment he decided he was done being an assassin? It felt like it. Anyway, most of my visions have been brief, lasting just a few seconds. They're like complete memories of small moments that appear suddenly out of nowhere, fully formed. It's a strange feeling. Okay, anything else? I'm starting to see Connor now, too. Though I hear his voice more often than I see him. I'm sure that will change. Oh, yeah, and yesterday, just before bed, I had a memory of being on a beach in the Caribbean with a bunch of sailors. Or maybe they were pirates. I don't know. No idea. Huh. I'm looking at that. And how do you feel in general? In general? Well, I feel older, for one. Much older. And it's strangely comforting. I'm collecting the memories and skills and thoughts of so many people I feel like I've lived a few hundred years or more. Is it possible that if I do this for too long, it'll push my own memories aside? That I'll be everyone but myself after a while? It's possible. That's called identity substitution. It's happened before, but it's rare. And someone with your background shouldn't need to worry. My background? You mean someone with my genes? My abilities? You have ESU DNA. And that lets you see things and do things and withstand traumas that other people can't. And I can suffer in ways that others can't. That's not something to be proud of. You mean the apple? Yeah. It has a pull, Bex. It tugs at my brain. It talks to me. It teases me. It drives me mad. And what I did to Lucy. God damn it. Nothing is worth the damage I did. The pain I caused. I know. But didn't it turn out that Lucy was a Templar? I'm not special, Bex. I'm lucky. That's all. I understand. We're assassins. It's our creed that makes us different, not our genes, not our blood. Anyone can join us. That's true. But let's leave that aside for a second. What I want to know is, have you ever had any Isu memories resurface? Isu memories? I don't... don't think so. I... I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. I think you'd know if you did. Maybe one day. 
we might be able to induce something. Jesus, let's fix the world first, okay? Before we start digging up my ancient ancestors. Deal. With my luck, I'll be related to some third-rate Isu, like, like Sisyphus or something. <laughs> Way to aim high, buddy. <laughs> hey, you gotta. Oh, Jesus, there's so much more. <laughs> okay. I, um, yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll, uh, we'll just pick this up. I don't know, let's see how long these are. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll just pick this up uh, on the next episode. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna we're, we're just gonna go ahead and call it here. Um, wow. So if you did enjoy this uh, <clears throat> exposition heavy episode uh, of me kind of learning certain things that and and kind of jogging memories of certain things that i've either you know played myself back in the day or, or have heard since then um for something that uh, some people watching this might already know uh, <laughs> and as always be sure to do those things that we youtubers ask you to do and until next time game on